Hello everyone. Welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number five for chapter two. This video is on a special topic. This equation might not be covered in a regular class that covers differential equation at a sophomore level. We will talk about the Bernoulli equations. As you will see very soon, this is actually an example of solving a nonlinear first order ODE by performing a variable change and uh, turning it into a linear equation. And then the linear equation can be solved by using the integrating factor method. Okay, so here is the Bernoulli equation. Y is the unknown, is a function of t, y prime t plus pty equals qt times y to the power n. And here n is an integer. We see that the left hand side is a linear expression in y, but the right hand side, y to the power n, is in general nonlinear. In the special case where n equals 1 or n equals 0, this equation is linear and it can be solved by our favorite method so far, integrating factor. Otherwise, for other choices of value n, this term makes the equation nonlinear. I would like to mention that such equations, they actually arise in applications as population model and uh, models of uh, one-dimensional one motions influenced by drag forces. This equation, however, has this interesting property. Under suitable variable change, we can change the equation into a linear one. Okay, let's look at that. Okay, so let's introduce a new variable, v of t, to be y of t to the power m, and now v is my unknown. This power m is to be determined. Okay, so with this choice, then we know y equals v to the power 1 over m as the inverse function. And since in the equation we have the y prime term, then we will differentiate y and we apply the chain rule. So y prime will equal to 1 over m v to the power ls, 1 less, so 1 over m minus 1 times v prime. Okay, so let's collect all the formulas on the top of the slide so we see more clearly what we do. This is the Bernoulli equation, that's the variable change for y, and this is the y prime. These are written all in terms of v, which is the new unknown now. Now we can plug in the expression for y and y prime using these two into this equation, and we have the following. So y prime is this, so that's what I put in, and p times y, so it's p times y, and the right hand side I have q times y to the power n, that is take nth power, then this is v to the power n over m. Now we multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of this quantity, so it will be 1 in front of v prime after the multiplication. So the inverse of this would be m2 times v to the power 1 minus 1 over m, the negative of this. Okay, so we'll have v prime as the first term, and the second term is uh, this one multiplied by v to the power 1 over m, which will cancel the negative 1 over m. So what remains is m, p, v. Okay. 
Finally, the right hand side here, multiplying with this term, we'll get m, which is here, the q we carry down, and the v term, we can add the powers together, 1 minus 1 over m plus n over m. And if you combine them right into a whole fraction, this is m plus n minus 1 over m. We see now the left-hand side is in linear expression of v, but the right-hand side in general is not, because this term might not be 0 or 1. Now we can choose the value for m. We choose it in a smart way, such that the power here becomes 0. So the choice for m will be m is 1 minus n, and then this is 0. Now the right-hand side of the equation is simply 1 minus n times qt, because v to the power 0 is 1. And then the left-hand side, putting the value m equal to 1 minus n here, and we see that it's also a linear expression then the whole thing becomes a linear equation for v. So this is an excellent news because for a linear equation like this, we know how to solve it. We can use the method of integrating factor. And once the v is solved, then we can recover the y, which is our original unknown by this relation, y is v to the power 1 over 1 minus n. Okay, so this is the general um, algorithm, the derivation of it. Next, we'll take an example. Okay, so here's the example. We consider the initial value problem with the initial condition given, and we want to solve it. So we recognize this as the Bernoulli equation with, um, if you compare this to the standard form we set up, so here we'll have pt is 1, qt is 3, and n equals 3. Following the derivation, um, we can make a variable change, and we set v to be y to the power 1 minus n, and putting the n negative 3, and we have v equal y to the power negative 2. One can either quickly do the derivation, which won't take much time, or we can use the final form of our derivation on the previous slide, and we can plug it in. So the equation for v would be v prime minus 2v equal negative 2t. And uh, an additional step we have to be careful here is to put in the correct initial condition. The initial condition for y is given, and we now to find out um, what is the initial condition for v. So v of 0 will be y of 0 to the power negative 2. Plug in the y 0 value, I get 1 over 4. Okay, so this is actually even with the constant coefficient here. It's easy to find out the general solution by using the integrating factor. And this is the general solution if you carry out that procedure. So vt is c times e to the power 2t plus t plus half. Here the c is a arbitrary constant. Now we can find the c value by using the initial condition, which uh, we calculated here. So v of 0 um, would be c plus um, a half, and that shall be 1 fourth, and this gives you the value c is negative 1 fourth. Okay? And put that back in, we have the solution for v. And then finally, we need to go back to the y, because that is our unknown. And then we use the inverse relation. 
y would be v to the power negative one half. And then we can write out yt is what's in this bracket is the v we computed here and to the power negative one half. Okay, some final remarks on uh, this procedure since we performed a variable change. So first remark, if you have a linear equation and you make a nonlinear variable change, let's say y equals fv, f is nonlinear. Okay, for example, f of v is v squared. And if you do that variable change, we would turn this linear equation for y into a nonlinear equation for v. So this says that you can always turn a linear equation into a nonlinear one by some variable change. And however, the other way around is not always possible. That is, if you have a nonlinear equation, it is not always possible to find a variable change as we did for the Bernoulli equation to make it into a linear equation. Such a procedure is only possible for some very special nonlinear equation and for some very special, carefully chosen variable change. Therefore, such special equations are worth mentioning. Okay, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.